Coming up, voices echo across the decades from the battlefields, the foxholes, and the home front on this edition of GoExplore.tv. Today, we travel to a place that celebrates courage and sacrifice. Our adventure begins with Lee Humiston Jr., who as a boy removed the ribbons from his father's uniform. That childhood fascination developed into a 50-year military career, culminating in the creation of the Maine Military Museum in South Portland, Maine. Everything in this museum is real. It was worn by somebody or used by somebody. I want this museum to be personal. I don't want, you can go to any museum in this country and see stuff, because it's everywhere, but not like here. This is about the people. This is about what they went through, the home front as well as, as the war front. I wanted to do something to memorialize the men and women from the state of Maine who've served all these years. And it started out small and it grew and it grew like topsy. We start out with Revolutionary War, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, World War II German, Japanese, Korea, Cold War, Iraq, Afghanistan, especially Vietnam. It's all here. It's all real because they're, they're all about people. You know, I mean, I show them a, an original Civil War Medal of Honor that was given to me by a gentleman whose grandfather earned it in the Civil War. We have items from the uh, Spanish-American War. We have the only known piece, well, there's 50 left, but the only one in private hands of pieces of the USS Maine that was made into a, uh, a tablet. I have the actual spoon, knife, fork, and cup from the Hindenburg when she crashed in New Jersey in 1937 and burned. And my newest one is a, is a sailor over here sitting behind a sewing machine. The sewing machine was used at uh, Lakers Naval Air Station from 1941 through 1955. And so they gave it to me. Well, I found a mannequin that fit perfectly and he's sewing, and the jumper that he's sewing, what's important about that, the man got the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart as a torpedo man and gunner on PT boats in World War II, but he, he can't weigh 80 pounds soaking wet, and there's not a mannequin small enough that isn't a child to be able to put it on, so we made use of it, so he's having it, it's on display so his grandchildren can see it. I have a letter I call the pillow letter, that a boy was heading off to Vietnam and he didn't want to wake his wife and have a tearful goodbye, so he just left the pillow, the letter on her pillow, and he was killed a month later. There's a uh, letter up on the wall that's never been opened because it was returned to the boy's mother that he was missing in action, presumed killed. Well, he wasn't, he ended up as a prisoner of war. But when he gave it to me, and I framed it so you can take it off the wall, turn it over and see, it's never been opened. And one time he came in before he passed away, and he said, uh, Lee, shall we open the letter? And I said, oh, sorry, I, I don't think so. Your mother wrote that 60 plus years ago. And that's her private thoughts. And he patted me on the shoulder. He said, son, I'm glad you said that because I'd have taken all this stuff out of here if you said open it. <laughs> so. To honor the men who were imprisoned in the Vietnamese POW camps, Lee built a replica of a Vietnamese prison cell. I had a friend who has great influence in Vietnam and he got to go in the remaining cells and he photographed over 200 photographs of the cracks, the smallest areas of it. He measured it to the nth degree and I built it and it's here. The POWs are very leery of it and when they see it, some will back away but some will spend time. One POW, if I may tell a quick story on it, he earned the Medal of Honor. His name's Leo Thorsness and when he came here to visit me, he went into the cell and he sat there forever it seemed 
and his hand kept moving back and forth at the base of the, uh, the, the bed. And when he came out, I said, Leo, what do you think? He said, Lee, one moment. I was the hottest fighter pilot in Southeast Asia. I've got three megs, I'm gonna be an ace. And the next minute, I've messed myself. I'm sitting in my cell, I'm beaten half to death, and I'm scared to death. I said, well, what was with your hand? He said, that's how real your cell was, Lee. In the original cell, somebody had carved a Christian cross deep into the concrete, and my hand worked it all those years ago. And when I sat in that cell, it took me back 50 years, and my hand went looking for the cross. So since he did that, I've actually put the cross in the, in the concrete in the cell itself. It has that kind of meaning to people. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell a story. We don't gloss over anything here. We tell the good, the bad, the indifferent. And we tell, as I said before, the fun things, the family stuff. Uh, this is one of the few, if only, museums in the United States that nothing comes here, ever leaves. It's here forever, and that's guaranteed in writing to the folks. The Maine Military Museum and Learning Center is located at 50 Perry Terrace in South Portland, Maine. Current hours of operation can be found at the museum's website, www.mainemilitarymuseum.org. If you'd like to see more of GoExplore.tv, please hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, go explore and find your adventure.